ESPN recently polled 18 team executives and insiders asking them questions about this offseason, free agent questions and trade questions. We're going to dive into the trade piece. They dig into Garrett Crochet teams and other top players that could be on the move. And some of them are very surprising. There are names in this article that we have not heard before. So we're going to dig into this. We're going to react to it. Leave your comments down below and hit that like if you enjoy your time here. Let's begin with the Garrett Crochet piece. Which team will land Garrett Crochet? If the White Sox trade him this winter, let's go through the ranking. The Dodgers received one vote, only one vote. I do feel like we've kind of moved on from the potential for Dodgers and Crochet. It really feels like that was something that we heard a lot of in season last year. Haven't heard too much about that this year. The Red Sox only getting two votes of these insiders and team executives believe it to be the Boston Red Sox. I think this is a great way to go for Boston, honestly. I I doubt the to the degree that they will spend in free agency. And with how deep the farm system is, they can put together a package of players to get Garrett Crochet. I would have thought more would have voted for the Red Sox. The Phillies are in at number two. This would surprise me. I don't feel this is an area of need. Philadelphia should be focusing on their bullpen. And if they want to reshape the lineup, trade Bohm, trade Castellanos, you need to be bringing bats back. You can't trade them and then call up a, a, a prospect or somebody from the minor leagues. So crochet Phillies, this doesn't make sense. Can, can, we, can we reallocate those votes and put them towards the Red Sox? Orioles, I like this one. Orioles get three votes, and this one tracks. This one makes sense. Now, uh, there has also been some talk that the Orioles, who have now traded 10, and if you include the draft prospect, 11 minor leaguers, farm system prospects, they've been moving a lot, and they may decide enough's enough. So you could see the Orioles maybe spending money, and that's the word that we're hearing on the street right now because the Orioles, to get Garrett Crochet, I mean, look, I like the fit, but I don't like what the trade package would be, and I also don't believe that the Orioles would go to that level. From everything we're hearing, the package would have to be, I don't see the Orioles going to that level. The Braves get four votes. This is the second most votes for a team. Atlanta getting four. Uh, The White Sox, the Braves, could not come together on a Dylan Cease trade last offseason. What makes you think they're going to come together on a Garrett Crochet trade this offseason? I wonder that. Now, Braves fans, you love to see your team here. Yes, there's a fit. Yes, there's a need. And I do believe that the Atlanta Braves could put together a package of prospects better than the Orioles could. So Atlanta here, look, if you have a rotation with Garrett Crochet Chris Sale, Ronaldo Lopez, you're putting together, and, and Spencer Strider coming back at some point next year. It's, this is an elite, elite swing and miss style rotation. I mean, you got high K rates everywhere you look with this, with this rotation for the Atlanta Braves if they get Garrett Crochet. Again, can they come together on a deal after not being able to work things out last offseason for Dylan Cease? I'll say this, Alex Anthopoulos should not be surprised by anything he hears when talking to Chris Getz about a trade. And at the very top, the team receiving the most votes was the New York Mets at five. And I really like the New York Mets here at the top of this list. I do believe they're going to go and spend in free agency, but they need three pitchers. Not one, not two, but three of them. So go bring... Sean Manaya back. Go run the playbook from last year where you, where you found Manaya and Severino. Go find another guy like that this offseason and trade for Garrett Crochet. That'll be a great rotation. Senga, Crochet, bring Manaya back. Peterson, have that. Uh, again, I don't want to call it a diamond in the rough because Severino and Manaya were not diamonds in the rough, but you go find that value piece, which David Stearns. I feel like he's programmed to go do that anyway. This could be a great rotation for the New York Mets. So I like the Mets getting 
five getting the most votes here because I do have the Mets towards the top. If I were to rank them, I would probably, the one thing I would do is I would slide the Red Sox up there with the Braves. I would go Mets one, Braves and Red Sox two, three, and then everybody else after that. If I were to rank them. Again, this is not necessarily a ranking. This is the number of votes that they received out of the 18 people that were voting. Here is the actual uh, piece from the report. There's actually even one person that was uh, being a wet diaper and said there will be no trade. Who's that guy? It's not Jeff, was it? It wasn't Jeff. It's very important because was Jeff Passett included in this? Because again, they say uh, they say team executives and you've got insiders. Is Jeff in here? Is Jeff the one saying no? Jeff, we need you to respond, please. Let's move on to the names. So after the Garrett Crochet trade piece, who is another top trade candidate besides Crochet? It was a question posed to the, again, 18 other executives and insiders in ESPN's poll. And you're going to, we're going to actually do this in reverse this time. We're going to start with the players that got the most votes. Because as we get farther down, we're going to see some surprises. Bruce Fitz, you got to hate this. But unfortunately, it is the state that the team is in. And you cannot let Devin Williams walk via free agency. If he's going to cost a ridiculous amount in his, when he's a free agent, you can't afford to keep him. You have to consider trading him. Part of it, too, is capitalizing on the trade market for relievers. Is it still ridiculously high as we saw at the trade deadline? Or has it sort of, uh, you know, calmed down a little bit? If it's like it was at the trade deadline, you have to trade him. Right after that, with three votes, was Ryan Helsley. Again, we are heavy on the relievers here. These are the two biggest names that could be dealt as far as bullpen relievers, closers go. And the same thing that we just said about Williams applies here. If the market is as hot as it was at the trade deadline, then you have to trade him. Helsley is heading into his final year. The Cardinals... I mean, the Cardinals are talking about trading everybody, so it only makes sense to move Helsley. We've got Nolan Arenado, another Cardinal on the list here, getting two votes. I'm still suspicious over Arenado getting traded. There has been, or in this article, they talk about moving him to New York or Philly or L.A., moving him to a, a, a major market in win-now mode. He's more likely to waive his no trade clause if he's going to a team where he could be playing in the postseason again because he might not be sniffing October uh, in a Cardinals uniform for a while or for the remainder of his time there. So it makes sense for him to waive the no trade clause. But my question is, who's going to take on that salary? Even if it's the Yankees, the Mets, the Dodgers, the Phillies, do they want to take that contract on? I don't think so. I mean, you literally go to baseball trade values. You cannot pull off a trade unless the Cardinals are eating a ton of that salary. Look, the the bat is trending down. The glove is and the defense is eventually going to start to trend down as well as he gets older. I don't know, guys. Um, there is a lot of smoke to this Nolan Arenado trade talk, but I don't, I don't think the Cardinals are going to be able to pull this off. So, because again, think about the money. The Cardinals are going to have to go pay for him to play somewhere else. Why don't you just keep him and at least he's a draw. Next up is Alec Bohm. This would be part of a Philadelphia Phillies uh, shakeup. After a disappointing exit, you, you don't feel like you can run it back. The, the question is the trade partner. It is difficult to find a trade partner for Alec Bohm because if you're trading him to now look because because it's a win now team, win now team trading Alec Bohm means they're going to want a win now piece back. So now you have to find a team that's willing to trade for Bohm. That is, I mean, if you're trading for Bohm, you're also in win now mode. Win now teams don't necessarily want to give up win now pieces, and that's what would have to happen here. Alec Bohm's not going to the White Sox in the Garrett Crochet trade. It's not happening. The White Sox want prospects. So finding the trade partner is very interesting. It's kind of challenging for Eric Bohm or Alec Bohm. Who's Eric Bohm? His brother? I don't know. Let's go. Next up, Jordan Montgomery. No surprise to see Jordan Montgomery here. Arizona Diamondbacks owner has made it very clear 
He doesn't like Jordan Montgomery. And if you can move him, all the better. Two fits here for me, in my opinion. Boston, Texas. Both teams need starting pitching and the New York Mets. And the Mets. Because if you are pulling off a trade with the Arizona Diamondbacks, you're probably not having to part with much either. He could be a steal for one of those three teams. Okay. Now we're going to get into the surprises. Cody Bellinger. Now it's only one vote. But as we will get to in about a minute or two, I'm going to bring up some players that it's rather surprising that we didn't see. But Cody Bellinger to be on here shocks me. How? Who? Going to want Cody Bellinger after his numbers went down. Nobody wanted him in free agency uh, two years ago. Now, or I guess a year ago, however you want to slice it up. Um, last offseason, nobody wanted him. At least nobody wanted him for the price that he was asking for. The Cubs ended up bringing him back, gave him a parachute, gave him a deal uh, that's very Cody Bellinger friendly. And, and his numbers kind of went went down. Who's going to want to trade for Cody Bellinger? And have that option looming where if he continues to regress or go backwards, he can lock back in for another year and be ridiculously overpaid. I don't see anybody wanting to trade for Cody Bellinger. How about Adolis Garcia? This is fascinating. The idea of Garcia. I pondered it when I was doing my trade preview preparation the idea of the rangers trading garcia as he gets deeper into arbitration and closer to free agency but in the end i i can't see texas dealing garcia i think they have to hold on to him he's an emotional leader you've got a a, a player here that is sort of uh, kind of feels like the heart of this team i know seager and simeon are the two best bats but Gar Garcia can certainly be that. We've seen him step up and be that. Um, but he also feels like he's the heartbeat of the team. I don't know. I would be shocked to see Adolis Garcia on the move. Obviously, it would be for pitching. So then we think about the pitchers that are available on the open market. Obviously, you cannot pull off a trade with Houston or Seattle. Those are two teams that could have some pitching to deal and could use an outfielder. But you can't do that. So now you start looking at other teams that are dealing pitching and you start thinking about the White Sox. Well, no, that's not going to happen. You think about Miami and no, that's not going to happen. Uh, Arizona, Jordan Montgomery, is there a way to work that out? That would be quite an overpay. So I don't know, guys. Uh, when I think about a putting together a, a trade partner, I have a difficulty doing that. If if Adolis Garcia was available and it wasn't on the Rangers, I could see, I mean, Seattle would be a solid one. Houston would be another one, but obviously you can't, you can't do that. Next up was Heston Kierstad. Now, this is a name that we haven't heard too much about this off season, but it makes sense. It tracks, obviously, if you're thinking about the Baltimore Orioles and what they need to do, if they're going to trade for pitching, if they're going to pull off a trade with the White Sox for Garrett Crochet, they may have to include Heston Kierstad. But does Chris Getz want Heston Kierstad is the question. Because Kierstad's arbitration clock has already started ticking. Would Chris Getz want prospects that have yet to see even an hour at the major league level so that the clock is at zero? I I, I do believe Heston Kierstad is certainly trade bait for the right pitcher in a trade. Maybe this is a Houston uh, a Seattle situation. Again, White Sox, I don't know. Miami, another one. I don't know. I feel like White Sox in Miami with trading Crochet for trading Lazardo, we've got to be all prospects with 0, 0.0 time accrued. This one shocked me. JT Real Muto. Uh, again, I guess we're thinking about the shakeup here. There's no chance. Who voted? Who's the one person? Who voted for JT Romuto to be traded uh, a, a, a top trade candidate besides Crochet? I, mean, how, I don't even know how we get there. I have nothing to say. I literally, I just, just, just no is all I have to say. That's not going to happen. And whoever voted that, if it was a executive, should never be used as a source again. 
And if it is an insider, they should be uh, demoted to outsider because there's no chance. No chance. All right. Now, I said there would be some names that are missing because, again, we see Bellinger. We see Garcia. We see Kirsten. We see Real Muto. We don't see some pretty significant names. And I find it interesting, the names that we don't see. What does that mean? Is it an oversight or is the market just not there yet? Jesus Lazardo and Luis Robert are the two biggest ones to me. We can include Jonathan India. Now, this piece was clearly because it talked about Nick Martinez surprising people with the deal he's going to get in free agency. Nick Martinez accepted the qualifying offer. So this poll obviously took place uh, a week or two ago. But Jonathan India has been in trade rumors for a while now. But no Jonathan India, no Brent Rooker, no Taylor Ward, no Bo Bichette, no Yandy Diaz. Lazardo and Robert, I got to think, are on the move this offseason. How are they not in this article? How are they not brought up? How when the guy who says JT Romuto, the, the, the person asking the question said, did you mean to say Jesus Lazardo? Boy, that was a really strange way of saying Lazardo's name. Lazardo, Robert have to be on the move. They absolutely have to this offseason for the Chicago White Sox to move forward with Luis Robert into next year. Look, the only argument you could make is that they're, they're trying to rebuild his value back up. But what if he struggles? Then he will be untradeable. I think you take what you can get. I think you find somebody, you find a team. Now, you got to wait. You have to wait because the... Soto thing has to play out. Uh, the Teoscar Hernandez, Anthony Santander. Once those names are off the board, then you got to push hard to get Luis Robert out the door. You cannot be paying him $20 million next year if you're the Chicago White Sox. So gotta, you got to move on. Again, Robert and Lazardo, I, I got to think. Now, Rooker and Ward, again, the A's have said they're not going to trade Rooker and Ward. I can make an argument to do it, but the team wants to compete He's really good, and if you want to compete, I don't think you can trade Taylor Ward. The Jays have said they're not going to trade Bo. Yandy's been popping up in some rumors lately. We'll see if anything happens there. But a very interesting list of names left off this top trade candidate outside of crochet portion of the ESPN article. What do you think? Comment down below with your trade predictions or your thoughts on anything from this article. I'm out of here, guys. We're going to end this one rather abruptly. I do appreciate you coming in. Make sure, again, hit that like on the way out and subscribe if you have not yet. As always, if it's low, let it go. And if it's high, let it fly. I'll catch you next time.